Welcome to AKT Celebrity Reads. We're going to do another special segment of Celebrity Reads. I'm going to try to get comfortable. I'm going to try not to keep you long. I'm going to do another edition with... I'm going to finish with Nipsey Hussle. I'm not going to address Cowboy too much tonight. I'm going to go back over the crisis actor from last week. I want to address that. Oh, yeah. I, I actually want to thank everybody. I, not only did I take up for myself, I had everybody fight for me and take up for me. We've been fighting all week, haven't we? And I'm glad because it looks like I might be dealing with a potential lawsuit having the so-called Wilson family saying, I'm not a child. They're suing me. They don't want me singing to my father, Jackie Wilson. They don't want me. That's just a shadow. That's not my neck. They don't want me using his name. They don't want me saying that. I'm his daughter, so and I'm still going to continue to sing to my father. I'm going to say that that's my father. I don't see that I've done anything wrong. I'm just going to adjust that camera. Thank you. I just don't like the way the light's... Okay, like hitting my neck. You like my outfit? That's what took me a little bit longer, because I was trying to get into this outfit. Let me see if you can see. See, I'm, yeah, it's kind of like the back out. Let me say a little bit. I got my little insulation in there. Hold on. Move the chair. Ooh, okay, it's pants, as you can see. And, uh, back. <laughs> I cannot believe it. It makes me feel like a kid again. I got, can you see that? I like got the, the back out. Isn't that cute? It is so cute, and it's it's so soft. It's like velvety. It feels so good, so 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 good on my skin. Okay, <laughs> I it was like I was trying to struggle to get in it because it's velvety, it's stretchy, but it's a little bit tight. So I was trying to like I kept trying to adjust the bra, and I was like, oh my god, I cannot get the the bra. Like the bra was too big or padded. I didn't have padding. So what I did, I just took off the bra. And I just took off the panty. The only thing I have on like is some stockings. <laughs> That's literally what I have. And it feels so good. You know how you ever, how women, like you wear your, your, a soft fabric or a lace or like a, like a control top, like pantyhose. And it, it feels so, girl, I am working on getting body like y'all. So, I thank you very, very much, child. I am trying to work on the tie ties, girl. I'm trying to work on the stomp. <laughs> so, I can get, like, I work on the skin. I, I work on everything. It's a not, and I'm never, I, I never feel like it's good enough. I never feel like I'm where I want to be. So, I think that's good, though, because it makes me constantly strive to be better. Okay. So I'll get into another video later about what I'm dealing with, with the fighting with the um, Jackie Wilson family. But, you know, I've been thinking about this all week. And there is a man that came on my page and threatened me about the cowboy reading and called me all kinds of bitches about the cowboy reading and said I was lying about cowboy and I did not know what I was taught. Yes. Yes, baby. I feel like busting loose, honey. Like that old song from what was it, the seventies? Busting loose. Oh yes. Oh yes. If y'all, let me know if you like it. If you don't, okay. Then I'll maybe I'll go change. If y'all think it, you don't like it. I just it feels so so good. Like I said, I anyway. This guy, I think some people saw him, girl. Okay. I'm like this, okay, whatever. He called, he came on my Facebook page a couple of days ago, said I was calling me all types of bitches, said that um, I was lying about everything I said about Cowboy, 
and I better take it down. I, I, yeah, I, if you can put his name back up, thank you, Alvin. Yeah, then you can, you can, um, share his name because I saw tonight he sent me a private inbox and he just said, Yo, like he was trying to have a conversation with me. I blocked him. I'm not going to have a conversation about this cowboy reading and about the crisis actor reading. And he said I was lying and called me a fake Miss Cleo bitch. So, what I said to him was, that's fine. If you want to call me a lying bitch and a Miss Cleo bitch, um, if you can prove that what I said was wrong, I am willing. I have no problem with that. I will publicly come back and retract everything I said. I will apologize and I will take, I will erase the cowboy one, two, and three. And I said, please tell me what I was wrong about because I said he was a drug addict. I said he was a bisexual and a sexual deviant. I said he had been in and out of jail. I said that he had sold drugs on the Marathon Plaza, on the property. I said, excuse me, he's supposed to be Nipsey's best friend. He said, oh, that's Big Thundercat and Nipsey's Little Thundercat, and he's his friend, and he would never do nothing to him. Bitch, take it down. And all that. I said, okay. Well, see, I don't worry about the Miss Cleo jokes. I really don't worry about what people say about me. What I worry about is being able to hear the spirit accurately and to give accurate information. And because I'm in a human body, I know that I make mistakes like a lot of people make mistakes. So I, I know a lot of spiritual people who say they're always right and they're never wrong. Well, you've never heard that about me, even though I have a very high accuracy rate. Sometimes I miss things, not a whole lot. But sometimes I miss things. And being a human, stressed, tired, whatever, sometimes you miss things. Hi, beautiful sister Ruby, Lynette. And if you can prove to me, because I don't fight and argue about readings. I don't fight with anybody, private clients or people in, the, in, in public. If it's wrong, then I just got it wrong. And I'm willing to retract something I said in public, apologize for any harm I caused, and erase it. I saw, like I said, I started naming uh, things, and I said that he had problems at home with his family and his father. And he was like, oh, you're reaching, bitch, because a lot of black men have problems with not, the father not being in the home, um, and a lot of them sell drugs. I said, no, there's a difference, because I didn't say that. I said, not only did I say he had a problem with his father and mother, I see he was disliked by his father family members because he's treacherous and he has character flaws. So not all, I, I understand a lot of people uh, and a lot of black men have a father missing, but that's different. I said he was disliked because he's treacherous as hell. He has no conscience, he has no honor and no integrity. I said then, and although a lot of black men, I, people were watching it, it's still up on the Facebook page. I'm not going to erase him calling me a bitch, anything like that. I have no problem with it. Because it's really not personal to me what you say about me, I don't know you, you don't know me. And as again, as I've said, these are spiritual readings. I'm not out there, I don't know. But I always said these are for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, but Candy couldn't prove me wrong. I said, so, so, I said, then on top of that, when you said a lot of black men have uh, the father missing out of the home, I said, yes, they do. But a lot of black men are not sexual deviants. And predators, like I said, cowboy is. And he was with his best friend at the marathon store and was shot and assassinated. And his best friend was right there and he said he didn't see the shooting. He doesn't know for a fact who shot him. He doesn't know for a fact Eric Holder shot him. And you said you turned your back for three minutes on Little Thundercat. And Big Thundercat comes back and he's assassinated right there. Which I, I know, and as I've told you, it didn't start in that parking lot. It was inside. And I said Cowboy was there and Cowboy saw it. Okay, we know Cowpo was there. Like I said, we know he saw it. Even though he says he did not. After I stated those facts... To me, on a spiritual level, I'm just saying spiritually, I'm saying I saw this. 
However, I know I wasn't physically there, but we saw you, cowboy, on tape. We saw you on the news. We know you were there. So I'm waiting for his friend, was Anton, that's the first name or something. I'm waiting for him to then come back and say, well, first of all, bitch, you got this wrong. Second of all, bitch, you got that wrong. He didn't do that. He started tagging other people. He said, do you see this shit? Do you see this? So I clicked like on it. I said, yeah, do you see it? Do you see this shit with this me, this bitch? That's it. Now, go ahead and start stating what I said that was wrong. He did not. And then another young lady stated what I had already seen. Cowboy has is a registered sex offender. He has been registered as a sex offender. And I had seen that's what he was. And I see that's what he still is. He did not respond. So I'm still... And plus, and then I said to him... Well, why is it? Did you step to all the men that are you on YouTube saying the same thing I've said and worse and the other psychics and the other people that are investigating this case that said the same thing I said? I said, when you confront them and you make them take their videos down, I'll take mine down. When you prove that everything I've said about this man is wrong, I will take it down. And then another thing I noticed, when I did the... Reading this, it was the same reading last week when I brought up the crisis actress. And, and let me tell you something, I have them here to show you. They're not the exact ones, but when I saw Cowboy, I saw this two masks one happy, one sad, the mask of comedy and tragedy around Cowboy. The common and tragedy is where you are publicly acting like you are very sad and this is a tragedy, but secretly it is funny to you. And then I saw the girl, the crisis actress, the childhood friend of Nipsey, Hermius. It made a lot of sense to me. Because on her profile page, she was wearing a black ski mask and she paints masks on people's face for a living. And she paints her face with the comedy and tragedy. She cries in public. She screams in public. As if she is so hurt and heartbroken, but inside a part of her thinks it's amusing. It is funny. Okay, when I said that, I didn't know for sure what I was saying. But I believe that I heard Nipsey say it to me. And then people went and got the evidence of it. And I saw the video of her at his funeral. Like he said she was. And still would not tell anyone what she saw. People... Because I saw pictures tonight, people show me where she draws masks. She paints people's faces like she paints, like she paints her face with masks and a lot of makeup and eye contacts and filters. She's a masquerader. Okay, so people went over to her page and I did not know they were going to do that. And they said, we know you were there when Nipsey was hurt at the marathon shop and at the barbershop. We just saw Alexis's video, and I said, oh, they used my name. They, I didn't know how many people were watching that reading and then saying they heard what I said, and you were his friend, and you betrayed him. She then says, I'm a weirdo. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, and I'm a liar, and she was not at the store. She didn't see Nipsey that day. She was there after someone called her to the store. Okay, so you admitted you were called to the store. You were there. And and she just kept calling me a liar. So when it was brought to my attention, I was absolutely shocked. I said, oh my God, I don't want to be responsible for someone being attacked. And I really believe that I heard Nipsey say that so what I have been doing along with dealing with personal drama and tragedy and lies being told on me having to fight battles that you all helped me fight yes baby she got a black barbershop apron on but said on the uh, Instagram she wasn't there so what I would like I would like to hear your whole story I think we all have the right to know you weren't there you weren't a part of it so you should have no problem telling us where you were and why did you happen to show up with a black barbershop apron on just like the black barbershop aprons they wear in the uh, marathon barbershop. 
That's just uh, really weird to me. It's a coincidence. So, again, as I said, I'm a fair person and I am willing to be wrong about something that I said about someone. Especially something that deep and something that serious about someone. I have no problem saying I'm wrong because I don't want anyone hurt based on something I said that I didn't hear or that I thought I hear, heard, or that I misunderstood. So what I have been doing, I got by myself and I started praying. I said, Lord, please check me and search me because I want to be right. And I am going to come back and I'm going to take that back. After I pray and meditate and see that I said something wrong, because y'all know me, I don't, I don't have a big ego, you know, or a lot of pride or nothing. I, I never want to have a lot of pride. I never want to be arrogant. And I don't want people looking at someone like they have a scarlet letter on them and they they don't, okay? What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do my libation because this is the stuff I'm getting ready to say to y'all. I don't want to say it. But I have searched myself and I'm still willing, you know, to keep, I'm going to search myself after the night and I'm going to come back again. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get this right because I went back and looked at the crisis act again. Since she called me all kind of liars and said I got a mental problem. You know, I'm a widow from out of town. You right. You are right, girl. I am a weirdo. I, I will agree with you, girl. I was born a weirdo. I am a medical intuitive. I am a spiritualist. I see demons. I talk to them. I see angels. I talk to them. I see dogs and cats, ghouls and motherfucking goblins. You are so right. And I walk in between worlds. And I love talking to dead people. The ones that are physically dead but yet are still alive. And my weirdness and my abilities, because of them, I can see from Atlanta to L.A. It doesn't matter where my physical location is because spirit is not confined to walls and doors and states and cities and principalities. Spirit go where it want to, say what it want to, do what it want to. So I'll be all of the things that you say and I will proudly wear those things again. What I am most concerned with is helping a person who is physically dead, yet alive, who wants to come to me, that has been violated, and that has a message to be told, and wants to still be respected, seen, and heard outside of the physical body that is yet still living. Thank you, Skip. In a body. That is what I do. So I embrace the weirdness. I love every moment of it. But what I will not be is wrong what i will not do is lie on another person and then act like the reading that i am seeing and that i am perceiving is correct when i know that i am lying i will not do that so when she said it and i saw the attacks and they told her they id'd me i said i said the shit i said yeah i said that shit I did, but I'm not going to send that to her because she right. I could be wrong. So I've been sitting with myself. And then I got some other weirdos that can see spirits too. That also got messages from Nipsey. I like to double check, triple check. See, that's why I don't come out with reading real fast. I like to sit on my shit and vibrate my pussy on my shit and meditate on it. Because I know that I'm a human. And I know sometimes I might be emotional. Many times when you get emotional, you know, sometimes you get things wrong because of how you feel. And I do believe the man woke me up, goddamn it, last week at 4.35 in the morning. Say, hey, I got to tell you about somebody. I believe that shit I said. And I, well, you know what? Let me do this here. I ain't sure wrong. Because I don't, I don't want to lie. I don't want to be wrong. That motherfucker said I was a motherfucking lie. See. So I, 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 I want the law to check my spirit, baby. 
But I'm gonna get, I'm gonna straighten it tonight. <laughs> Have mercy. And this just part two on the crisis act, though. Because I think it's gonna be a part three since she said this shit about me. Said this shit about me. Yeah. Did this shit about me. Because I looked at it. Nah. Give my libation. Jackie Wilson. Ashe. Ermia Joseph Ashkadon. I'm gonna tell you something. That, that shit, that good right there. Let me have a little goddamn shot. I'm gonna tell you something. That vexed my spirit. When I sent them, went over there and said that shit to that girl. And so, I started asking my little psychic crew. I said, what y'all see? They come up. They start looking at the shit. Hey, Christina. And I said, well, she there. They looked at it. They said, yeah, she was there. I said, do she know who shot Nipsey? They said, hold on. They looked at the, they cause. Because he didn't walk in and talk to them. They said, yes, she do know. Yes, she was there. The crisis actor was there. She know who did it. And she's a gang member. Like I he said, and I had seen in the spirit. Hey, Ricky. And I said, uh... So, she was on the property in an advisor shop. They said yes. And then I looked again, because you know me. Y'all, y'all that follow me a while. That's my babe. I love Nip. Damn boy! <laughs> That's my baby. So, I say, I start looking, and I said, since I'm a liar, spirit, let me see the truth. And I laid them out again. I did my reading based on what the Spirit told me. And then I looked at the cost. I said, God damn it. Now, she said what I seen was a damn lying. I'm a weirdo motherfucker that ain't never been there and don't know Nip. You right. I didn't get right too, girl. I didn't physically know him, but I know him now. I know him in the Spirit. And to be honest with you, what I said... When I looked up, I ain't even finished. But you see, I got all these goddamn papers here on the crisis actor. This shit was more fucked up when I went back and looked the second goddamn time. Now, we should have left it where it was. Cause, did she say what she said about me? And then the, the nigga threatening me. Oh, and let me tell you, the same nigga that I seen a picture, dark skinned nigga with dreads, is on a picture, taken up for cowboy, on a picture with the crisis actress. On Instagram. He got, he, it, it's the same guy. So he's friends, the one that was threatening me, and calling me a bitch, and said I'm a, li a liar. He's also on a picture on the Instagram with the crisis act. So it's clear he's threatening me too because I said the crisis actress was in that store. And then you know what I'm wondering? If you just came up there again, why did you have a black barbershop apron on like the people in the barbershop? You, you just wear those? You walk around town, you drive around with a black barbershop apron on. And then she got up there and I went and listened to the tape again. It was a slim... Older black woman that was a reporter and she was up there. I ain't gonna say crying, I'm gonna say they sat down here, call herself crying. And then she told the reporter, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, and bent over, Oh, don't take me yet because I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be fake. So she told her, Don't take me yet. Oh, you see a blue orb, Nikki? Make sure my baby candle lit. So, she up there, huh, and after I, I seen what happened, it, let me tell you something. It was it's scary to me. Let me tell you, this girl is scared. And I see why she's scared. Because she dealing with one of the niggas that's behind this. There's a smaller set of 60s. As I say, 
There's all the sixties had nothing to do with this. All the sixties did not do this to him. There are sixties that are loyal to Nips and love neighborhood. It was a smaller group, and and you know, again, like I say, this is for entertainment purposes only. I'm just talking. Okay, we just talking. This is what I see on a spiritual level. What I seen was, when I look at her, she was running with a smaller clique of gang members. And I'm not sure if some of them are blood as well. There's a guy, this is a second bald-headed guy I seen. And he's not very tall. But he's shorter and type of stocky and like brown-skinned. <laughs> Jenna, you crazy. And he's very vicious. And very violent. And she was very afraid of him. So he was in a lot of debt. And he wants. And very jealous of Nipsey. And he wanted to be a part. Of this assassination. But also. I see that she. Was running with these gang members. Allegedly. She's a part of a gang. Or has been a part of a gang. In the past what I've seen. This girl is crazy. And she has committed violent acts as well. And she's wow. Now she might have turned. Come down now. See she's dealt with drinking and drugs. She still gets high now to deal with the pain. Now she is hurt by what happened to Nipsey. But she is scared as hell. Because she does not want to lose her life. And she does not want her children to be killed. So it's, it's, she had to choose between her and her children. Or telling what she know happened to Nipsey. Or who was involved in the assassination of Nipsey. This is what I'm seeing about her. So this girl is split. But at the same time, let me tell you a little thing. It's real weird to me. I saw her with this. It's two men that were shooting and that were very, very violent. But this one that I'm seeing is the one that was the leader of it. And this man is a drug addict. I see the nigga on that ice. The nigga smoked that ice. And he's real angry. He's a paranoid schizophrenic. He take everybody out to get him. He has killed people very, very vicious, very, very violent. And the two female shooters and killers that I saw, and it was on her in that video, like the one standing behind the watching light-skinned girl, the other one that I really wonder about her affiliation that was standing by her with some roses on the shirt and patting her, saying, you all right, it's going to be all right, and rubbing her, then she bends over and really gets very dramatic then. And falls down on the ground hollering and growling, see. And then they rubbing her. But see, I don't know about the rub. God damn it being genuine. Is that a real rub? Like you real concerned? Because I don't think so. Because I see these two girls, two, three girls that this guy, that I'm saying is bald head and very paranoid schizophrenic that smoke eyes, smoke that do that mouth. And he... The girls will do anything for him. And I see that she, allegedly, and the other two will pass around. Not only sleeping with him, as he say, they, he, they, they, that's, that's what they do. You know, they, it's like he the king. They circulate around him. So she was fucking for clout and committing crime because they gave her a quota of things that she have to do to prove herself to them and prove a lawyer. But I see the two girls really didn't like her and they did not trust her. She's not a leader. She's a follower and she'll people please or be with a man or sleep with a man to try to get love and acceptance because she doesn't think she's pretty. She doesn't think that she is the beauty ideal. She has a real bad self-esteem problem and she's also a thief. I see that she has problems with her mother in the past and family. I wonder where she leave them children at. Who took that little girl? And then I find out a little boy. Because remember that other reading I said, I seen a boy and a girl in a car and two men. And they pulled a gun on her told her, if you tell what we just did to Nips and we finna shoot it up in here, we finna shoot him. Then you don't want your little, something happen to your little girl, do you, little precious little girl. And she does worship the little girl and the little girl gonna be famous and a model and all of that. Okay. 
So I saw that and I saw how she has involved, she, oh, okay, get about the family. She wasn't always with her children and took care of her children. And she had a lot of problems with living in poverty and problems with money. So I don't know if she left or she said her dad raised her. It was a problem with the mother. That's what I'm saying. And then two, she was a disappointment because I don't wonder, did she leave her children with someone when they were younger? Did she take care of them children all the time? Because I see she was out in the street stealing, lying. She got bodies on her. And I just nipped it that I said something happened to her around him. It's other niggas done came up dead around her. She got bodies on her, allegedly. And niggas around her that done died. And she saw, she helped set them up. Scenarios like this. You act like you want to sell some pussy or you want to meet a nigga in a hotel room. You get in there, the nigga get relaxed. Nigga get his drawers down. All of a sudden, bust in. Nigga get robbed. Run them pockets. Then you, oh, 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 I, you don't know what happened. Uh, nigga get, get, get gets violent. Nigga get killed. You let, watch a nigga lay there dead. Don't nobody know you saw it. Don't nobody know you were there. Next thing you know, you watching them roll his body over, allegedly, as his pockets being dug in, wallet, money, ID and shit, getting ran through, tossed for this crazy guy that I'm seeing, allegedly. See, see you called me those names, allegedly, but I, I saw it, we were watching, you called me those names. And so, you know, as I go back to check myself, not you, to check what I saw, I then see worse. So not only am I take, I'm not taking those down. I'm not backtracking. And then I talk to another young lady who has the same kind of gifts I have, who I asked today, she saw the same thing. I'm not taking it down. Now I'm, I'm just adding what they call an addendum or an attachment to what I said about you. That again is for entertainment purposes. Because I know this is very serious. Let me say this. But again, it is allegedly, this is just a reading for entertainment purposes. But whoever is listening to me now want to threaten my life and call me names. You, for some reason, you don't want to see the entertainment value here. You are not entertained by my readings. And you want to physically hurt me or wish me dead. That's fine. I am still going to say what Nipsey is giving to me. That I'm looking here and verifying. And let me tell you something else about this guy. I see why she's afraid. Why she says she's like the three monkeys. See no, hear no, speak no. There are two parts to this. This guy was paid by someone to do this on a higher level, like a corporate level. This guy was also in debt. Because I heard the word loan shark. So I don't know why I heard Long Shark and what it means. If this guy was in debt, I don't think the marathon was had mortgages. I don't know, so I can't speak on it. I don't know. She didn't come across the video, baby. The video watchers came across her. They went to her page and start writing on the page. I started asking her to check her DM. I know, but you see what position it puts me in, Lasagna, to say these things. And that's why I keep saying it's alleged, but these people are still mad at me and threatening me. And so the guy, I'm seeing there's a corporate person that has a hands in the, in the pocket of the lower level people. And it looks like they lied to them and told them, if you do this, you will be able to run this territory and this property and you'll be able to handle it. Not telling them that once they got rid of Nipsey, they were going to surround the property anyway and take it over and then tear everything down and rebuild it for um, the railroad that Nipsey knew about that's coming directly through that property or at the front. It's really fucked up because I'm going to get into that in a minute because I, the guy 
Not only when he gets very angry or something doesn't go his way, he will bump his head up against the He does stuff like this. He has these violent fits, these rages, and he already got his mind damaged because the nigga do that eyes. Yeah, that's what I saw. Drink me some. They have seen this guy viciously beat people and kill them. He gets off on it. It's an adrenaline rush. And this girl, crisis actor, is terrified of this guy. Because she knows he'll be friends with you one minute. And because he's so paranoid and schizophrenic, he's an extreme manic depressant. Happy one minute. Turn on you the next like he doesn't know you. They told her they would kill her. So when she saw that happen to Nipsey, and then she gets out of si outside. Thank you, Mary. They tell her, get out in front of that camera. Make it good, bitch. Get out there. You're going to you're going to be the face of this. And we're going to reward you. So you get down the camera, and then the other girl looking at her because the girl don't like her anyway. Because she thinks she's a this woman. Is a compulsive liar. Real goddamn sneaky. Real fucking sneaky. Dudes that shit too. Drink. Tell lies. And steal. I think that. She's a thief. And a real big liar. And real damn sneaky. It's hard to catch this fucker. She's so damn sneaky. And she, she real slick. And she'll look you in your eye. I know I, I didn't I didn't do that. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't do that. I wasn't even up there. Please don't do nothing to me. Please don't whoop. Like niggas don't whoop the ass. Use her. Abuse her. I didn't go in your pocket. I swear I didn't go. You know I'm seeing this here. And I'm looking. I said god damn. Maybe I shouldn't have went no goddamn damn deeper call. Um, the shit of Wassa that she said I seen the first goddamn time. So I'm, I'm look. I said so. This so she is a compulsive liar, a thief, and was involved in people niggas getting killed, niggas come up missing around her. I can see the the bodies, dead people hanging around her in the spirit, trying to talk to her, and they told me she know them. And she know what happened to some of them. So I said, what is this, uh, a black widow? Uh, you help set niggas up? She have done stuff like that in the past to survive. And to prove herself to the city. Allegedly. Because you know I'm a weirdo from Atlanta. I don't know nothing. So she gets out there. And they're watching her, and they tell she she don't she's nervous. Now let me tell you something. She was full of anxiety. Her heart was like this. She was scared. She was very upset, but she was in shock. She was having extreme anxiety. She really was. Go back and look at her. Now that was real. But she really couldn't cry too much because she was in shock. She was mortified and petrified over the gruesome act of humanity that had no compassion for the person they had just done that to. And she definitely felt if they would do that to him, she would do it to me. She was having extreme anxiety. She was panicking and she could barely breathe. Because oh, she was so afraid. ATL, shouted ATL, hope. Peace up, A-Town down. Ten toes down in this bitch. So she looking at him. The nigga do this. So when she do this. Uh, <laughs> And 
Can you do this? Oh, damn! She just got the phone on one hand and I, she got her eye cover. Then she. Oh! And then the one over there, the female shooter. You see that fucker went blinking and one grinning because she like, bitch, I don't like you no way. Like your fat black ass no way because I know you is a greasy, slimy ass bitch you talk to motherfucking much. I been want to shoot your motherfucking big ass. Go on. on. Go on now. Fuck up. Because you know I'm going to do something to you anyway from the other time you fucked some shit up. Showing the pressure. L has on a lot of goddamn pressure. <laughs> Allegedly. I'm looking at this shit. And I said, God damn, that's fucked up. But I understand why, you know, she was scared. Not scared, scared. Till you take your ass home. And you ain't gonna set nothing. Yes. And then they kept focusing the camera on her like that was set up. And see. I ain't gonna set no name. She got a visit. And it was by, a, it was a female that no Nipsey, allegedly, and she say, I have a deal for you, a proposition for you. Yeah, but I don't believe all that surveillance was in the barbershop, and we already know the tape was layered and altered. You don't, you don't have everything. You don't have the whole tape on now. And she says. You know, I'm telling you how I found out. She said, you can make a lot of money. Because I know that you don't want to be poor, you don't want to be broke, and you want to be considered beautiful, and you want fame. So, if you're willing to make this private agreement with me, I will give you money right now. All the interviews, the fame, the fortune that you have, I will make you a rags to riches story. And I'll have you doing interviews showing the girl that came from poverty and nothing that has now become very successful. And you will be admired by women and you will be a role model and an icon and all they'll know is, now don't bring up Nipsey now, we're not going to really talk about that, how you came into view with the camera, media, we're going gonna to let that die down. But you will be on television, you will get recognition, you know, you, your career and opportunity is going to open for you if you keep this quiet. This week, Nipsey has been very angry. He was angry because I tell you what, he saw some people at his birthday party. And he don't want his, these people near his mom, his sister, his brother, the baby. And he was angry about Cross's birthday party. Because he said there were also people around Lauren and the baby that he considers questionable and suspect. And it made him very nervous and very, very angry. So he was having a fit about Cross. And he came here, he was very angry. Yes, Nip yeah, yes, yes, Nikki. And he also told me yesterday, he said, there's a shoe. He, because I see his shoe came out, and I love it. I got to have a pair that got down black and red. 
that's hot right there. I'm, I'm going to give me some of them black and red. I don't even wear Puma, but I'm going to rock them for neighborhood. I want them black and red Pumas, goddammit. Because them motherfuckers is hot. He said he want to see Cross have a tennis shoe. And the way he described it to me, it looked like more than one tennis shoe. I don't know if he want Cross to have his own cheering line and have some clothes to go with the shoe. It showed me almost it kind of looked like some graffiti with one pattern on one one style of shoe. He go. <laughs> and when you walk, when Cross walk with the shoe, the heel looked like the, the shoe was floating. Like the, like the heel, like it was moving. And then it had these, yes, cross the balls. Then it had these different colors splashed in it, in the side of the shoe. But the heel was open on the bottom, like, kind of like a Nike. It looked like a little bit. But when he walked, it looked like liquid or something. Like the sh it was moving in the heel. And you saw the different colors. That was one he, he showed me. Then I think it was a black and red one like his. And I said, wow, so you want Cross to have a shoe? I said, well, maybe they're thinking of Maybe they might have a kid's line and have a Thor, a uh, 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 Cross. I don't think about my brother when I said Thor. Cross with his shoe and walking, you can see on the side, you can see the, the color. It was like it was black. And then it had the splash of color on top. And then on the heel, the heel looked like it was moving. And I said, that's so cute. And that's so precious. He'd be the perfect model for you and, like, a clothing line for Cross. Yeah, it looked like it was left. Yes, Christina. It was a beautiful shoe. And I could see him walking from the side of the shoe. <laughs> he was showing, showing me different styles he liked. And he... There, unfortunately, people around that still know about. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. What happened to him, and nobody knows. They're under the radar, and they're not being questioned. People don't even know. Maybe the police don't know about all of them because a lot of people are not talking about their involvement and what they saw and what they know and who they know. They think they've gotten away with it, and they're laughing, and they think it's funny. And that bothered him. He was so upset. And so when he told me that about her, and I saw that she was very afraid for her life, and she wasn't hanging around that barbershop. Now, I don't know, y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. She's not hanging around like she used to. She is scared, and she's trying to protect herself, or she has even moved. Yeah, he looks like he's going to be a tall boy, good-looking boy. She moved, and she is very paranoid. She's in defense mode. She's on very high alert. She's not telling a lot of people where she is. She's not being friends with a lot of people. She's paranoid. She thinks somebody is going to do something to her. And somebody's out to get her. She's very, very afraid. I don't know. Because since I don't know her personally, I wonder if this lady really moved or moved around. She's isolated herself and she's afraid to let a lot of people in or deal with the people she was dealing with around this, all she know, they told her, you better not say anything. Even if you move away or whatever, don't deal with us, you better not say anything. Or you know we're going to kill you, bitch. Or that something happened to your children. And the thought of letting her children, that something happened to them, will kill her. So she's willing to keep this quiet about what happened to Nipsey. And she's covering it and acting like she's okay and she's successful with the money that she's gotten and the little fame and the notoriety that she's gotten. But you know what? She don't sleep at night. She's got a lot of guilt. She's got a lot of fear. And she gets high. I seen her in some type of high rise, like a building. And it was nice. I don't know if this is an extended stay or this is a hotel. Or she got apartment in a she got a place in a building that you have to go up on the elevator to get to her floor. She go in and out there or either she stay there or she move around. So she's very, very afraid and she's constantly looking. And she don't let very many people 
get close to her. She don't want to be close to where them people know how to find her and get a hold of her. So she's suffering through this. No, she don't trust police because she knows some of them got something to do with it and there were agreements made. She's suffering through this in private and she has a lot of guilt and a lot of pain, but she's stuck. So, of course, she's going to say, I'm a liar. I wasn't there. I don't know. I'm a weirdo from Atlanta. Because you really, you you don't want to tell that. Because you know if you say that you know that and you saw that, and if you don't tell, well. Okay. So, then I saw Nipsey because he was so angry. He was talking about her. And as I was writing it, he was saying these things. And I also see she has a demon on her. She has a male demon of lust that likes drugs and that is bisexual. And it had diamonds on it. So diamonds and gold on it. And look like some rubies. So I knew she had made some type of deal with someone who had demonic ties that controls money and wealth and opportunities. So she's she's see she can't she's scared to say something about that because she'll lose those jobs and opportunities that now are starting to open up to her to reward her for what you do to your childhood friend, Nipsey. And Nipsey went to her, because I'm gonna tell you, she can feel Nipsey. And she can see him. She thinks she sees him and feels him. She gets a lot of anxiety because it's like during the night when it comes. And she 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 taking something to get high. So she can cope because she really cannot cope without being high. Oh yeah, she and she, yeah, she does. She takes something and she drink. She can't cope smoke. She cannot deal with this and eat. The guilt every day is hard for her not to think about Nipsey and to live with what happened and what she's done. She did not kill him. I'm not saying that. She did not physically touch him. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying she saw it and she knows who did. That's that's what I'm saying because that's what he said to me. And that's her friend. He was a baby. He was a beautiful baby just hugging and loving that girl. And who knew he loving that girl and missing his bus for that girl that wish somebody could have prophesied and said that would be the same girl that would see someone hurt that baby. He started swirling around her. And she was, uh, she started, sometimes she'll shaking. She has a panic attack. She starts shaking. And she get real bad anxiety. She's not going to tell nobody. But she can feel him. And he said, what did you, what did you do? He started talking to her and walking. And she just, Sometimes she has controllable panic, uncontrollable panic attacks when she's alone or some, somebody close to her knows. And she gets th- things to keep her calm down and relax. She binges or she tries to stay busy, but she nips it on her head all the time. And he said, bitch, what did you do? Why did you do that to me? Bitch, what did you do? And he started just walking through the room she was in, like, Tearing up things literally on a, on a spiritual level, like moving things around. So as he's moving things, I'm looking and I see a contract. And he looked and he picked up the paper and he said, Vicious, you did to me? You did this to me? And the spirit, you know, allegedly. You know. He's seen her got an offer she could not refuse. You either go along and you're going to get this fame and fortune. You always want to be famous, bitch. Here it is. In exchange for you never telling what you know. We're going to make sure you, you get this attention. And you see she's getting it. That's why I know that was a part of, uh, he was a part of a sacrifice that a lot of people are eating off, nipping, riding up off of him. They ate on him when he was in his body and they're eating off of him outside of it. Because she feel like she damned if she do. She damned if she don't. And now you see her. Bragging about all the opportunities and all over the play, doing this, doing that. And he saw it and he was angry. And he said, you fucking bitch, how could you do this to me? 
how could you do do this? But I guess, you know, she between a rock and a hard place. And she got babies to think about. So I, I understand that. But he gonna haunt you forever, cup. Well, you know, allegedly. Allegedly, baby. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a weirdo in Atlanta. And, uh, what else to see? I want to bring something up. When I said in the last video that they had decided to do the hit six months before, like around September, October, which if you count up to March, that'll be six months when they assassinated him, okay? But then I say, starting in January, January 2019, up to March 2019. That's when they seriously started to choreograph it physically, blow by blow, hand by hand. Had agents, excuse me, police, choreographing the shit. Thanks, Juan. Thank you. And you notice that letter David Gross got was in January. And then I look, you know that they were working on the Crenshaw. LAX line uh, for to move its 8.5 mile Crenshaw LAX line. Okay. January 17, 2019, Metro Crenshaw line was behind schedule. The agency's Crenshaw district to LAX light rail line was originally supposed to open to the public in the fall of 2019, but that projection has been pushed back to May or June of 2020. 2020, at the soonest, the 8.5 mile, 2 billion project is looking less embryonic than it did last year. April 30th, uh, excuse me, April 3rd, April 3rd, you see that? He was assassinated on March 31st. Just a few days later, April 3rd, 2019, the grand opening of the new rail yard that will serve Crenshaw, LAX, and Green Lines. And it was $172 million. The Southwestern Yard, built by Hensel Phelps Herzog, HPH, under contract with Metro Construction, began in May 2016, completed in January. 2019. Now the reason why that I'm looking at that because January is also, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is when David Gross got a letter or from the DA saying you better either evict the marathon store with what they're doing over there, clean it up. Now, to me, it tied in because they know they was already behind schedule. See. David Gross them know because he dealing with the politicians and the people that work for the police and zoning and planning. They were behind schedule. See, they had to go on and start choreographing this shit with that assassination in January. I mean, you know, allegedly, nah. Because they were trying to get rid of Nips and get him out of there anyway and blame the crime and shit on him. And it wasn't his fault. And said he wasn't. First they said he was under investigation. No, nah, that wasn't him. There were folks around him. No, you all was looking at him. Because you were trying to target him and set him up for some shit. And then you watched that shit. When he was assassinated, you watched that goddamn shit. Because the police are all the way around that area from what I was told from folks that's out there. But they wasn't on the corners that day to stop that shit or get out and shoot out. With the folks that were shooting nips, it was quiet. And the brawl got them early fucking daytime. Y'all know y'all were already behind schedule. The higher ups know. So you kicked a little back on the lower level ones to, to do that, do your thing on him, see. Cause it I'm just looking at the dates, see? I'm looking at the timeline and how they want that, that line running through Nipsey property. They finna speed it up now. See. He ready to go on on. And get the construction started because they done told your goddamn ass. Now you go look this shit up. 
Now this ain't alleged what the fuck I'm saying. I looked this up but I just read it to you. They're going on right now. They're ready to tie it down and got them run the train through there and gentrify this shit. They said 20, it was supposed to be done now. This shit late. They want to have it done by 2020. I think I remember another reading when Nipsey came to me. It might be the one I he said sent his mama a message for him. I mentioned some he was with David uh, Nikola Tesla and Steve Jobs. On the other side, he figured out how to come back over here on the other side through the portal. I think he said some, some fucked up shit was going to happen in 2020. About that brain chip, the brain mesh, and locking areas down. I must. I, I, I look at this here. See? So when they did that on the lawn, I said some other shit right here. I seen a girl, a gang member. But they couldn't send that big titty fat one up there. Because she would, wouldn't fit into the scenery. I seen one that light skinned, mixed looking, like the one that was standing there. And I know this is gonna sound crazy to you. And again, I'm just talking. This is allegedly, goddamn it, you know. Cause I'm a weirdo motherfucking bitch, you know. That's down here in Atlanta. I'm just talking about a man I don't know that I didn't know in the physical, but now I know in the spiritual. I seen this girl. She goes into this office building. And some of the walls on the office building are made of smoked glass and metal. The steps are made of cement and stone, not carpet. It's like the outside of the office. You walk up, and I remember seeing a parking lot, I seen a yard outside with grass on it around the building with trees around it and the glass, you know how some walls in a building are made of glass instead of cement or brick this was a real thick really pretty smoky glass a uh, building was some of the wall was glass and metal the framing was metal. She walks up these steps. As she walk up one set, it's a little break here. You take, you curve around and go up another set. She go up there, it's a man. It's a black man. He got a spinny suit on. Kind of brown skinned like. He knows that she's the gang member. And he give her money. But it was like in an envelope where you can't tell. Nobody can see. She's a gang member. She go take it back. So, I know it sounds bizarre. You know, because I've seen some other psychic also say that my readings just get more fucking extreme and goddamn bizarre. I guess I'm in the motherfucking Walt Disney world in this bitch. Let them tell it. Cause you know my shit that's getting more fucking bizarre with every goddamn show. But that's fine with me. This was not just some low shit that y'all think. This was some high shit that were passed off and done by some low motherfuckers to cover the one on top of it. And to move in and steal that boy shit. Nah. You can pat your ass on that. Allegedly. What else I got damn see? I want to get into Oh, so, you know, I got a lot and it's late. 
but call what she said. She's a very lonely person. Very lonely, very miserable, very unhappy. Because she didn't have the family life she wanted as a child, and then she was a disappointment to her mother. Ginger, you think you need to goddamn drink some? Record company executive office. <laughs> Y'all ain't finna make me do that. Yes, this girl's very, very, very unhappy, and she is treacherous. You hear me? She's a slick pretender, and she's goddamn treacherous as a motherfucker. And she good at lying and playing like she's the victim. Okay, let me tell you something I thought was strange. I'm trying to look at it, so somebody, if they want to contact me from Cali, I want to tell you, but this girl is possessed. And all oh, for some reason, yes, there's another thing I want to say. I ain't going to get into too much. Um, the guy, is, is that that man that's crazy and unstable got a blood-born pathogen. This guy has a real bad health problem. It's a blood disease that he got was in that, that uh, with her up there in that barbershop. And it's some real weird, and I don't know what it was, but I wonder what they selling drug up there in that barbershop. It looked like, or was it, can y'all tell me, was it any construction or remodeling going on in the barbershop? Was some with the floor, or, I don't know, some plastic, was some round or down? Was some being moved around or altered or changed that weekend when Nipsey came up there and was assassinated up there? Because I see, I don't want to say that. I say allegedly. Because I see a wall in the barbershop and behind it some kind of hole. And then in the back of the barbershop, I see some drug or something hit back there in that damn alley. I... Allegedly. I'm really wondering about that. And then, you know, some weird shit I seen. I seen a honeycomb. There were bees. Bzz, bumblebees. And from the little bit I did research with bees, near Crenshaw, basically bees in California, the bees come out at a certain time, like Grandma had said. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm just talking, allegedly, the bees, I seen a piece of honeycomb, like in the back of the building somewhere, I don't know if it's trees, I don't know if it's anything that bees will pollinate on in the area, I don't know if it's flowers, if somebody know, please tell me, anywhere in that area, it doesn't have to be in the Marathon parking lot, it could be trees in the area, around the area, or on the block. It doesn't have to be right there in the parking lot store. Just around the radius. I heard, I see bumblebees, and I see the honeycomb. With the bumblebees, it was a broke-off piece. But it was in the... Philanda, why are you making fun of me? It was back there... I see a fence, I see some concrete, but I see some kind of tree or something nearby, a bush. And I, from the little bit, I, you tell me if I'm wrong, bumblebees come out early. Bumblebees don't come out late in the evening. They handle their business early. That's what the spirit said. Why? Is it important the Spirit said? Because it will give me a sense of time. Based on the animal, goddammit, that was in the fucking area. There was some bees nearby. Busy bees. Like them other busy motherfuckers. Now, allegedly the bumblebee was up there. I see. Okay, I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to go. 
Nipsey. I'm not going to call no name. Nipsey. He said all kind of shit in here this weekend. I, he's very upset about relationship he was in. And he say we fought. He said at first it was beautiful. He said this I, I thought we was compatible. We got along. We had a good relationship. He said we was freaking. She let me do anything I want to do. He said actually she was more freakier than I thought. Because She'll do threesome with me. I like the way we got down. Because she know how to suck my dick. And suck it in a certain spot. To drive me crazy. Make me calm. And I'm like, Nipsey, you so fucking stupid. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just stupid. Now. <laughs> I'm saying, it's your know. You know. To real freaking do whatever I say. He said, then, we, he said we broke up about 10 or 12 times. He said, she was fucking another nigga, you fucking around on me. He said, well, I was fucking around on her. I said, well, shit, nigga, you honest. So, I'm just saying, uh, mm, 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 okay, fool, you crazy. And he's talking about, oh, see, I got tired, he said, because I saw this wasn't working. It wasn't working out. And we kept fighting. He said, we, we, and I tried to get away from her. He said, then she threatened me and told me, I ain't saying no goddamn name. Y'all shitty and messy. Y'all shitty and messy. I, I, I didn't want to fuck with her no more because it was too much drama. But then she told me, well, Oh, bitch ass nigga, you think you finna leave me alone and do this and that? She she's real childish and immature. Y'all look at her and see one thing, and y'all think that it's perfect and all that. She said, but she really not that. She really not what the fuck y'all think. So then she started threatening me. Well, I'm going to call such and such and tell them don't help you with that album, don't help you with that TV. Don't do nothing for this nigga. Because this nigga... Nipsey messy. Nipsey messy. So you want to argue with him? Fighting him? I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to tell him this. I'm going to tell him that. If you're not with me, I'm going to fuck your shit. That's real messy and immature and childish. He said, I got tired of it. That's why we're fucking another bitch. He said, and then, he said, besides, we were fucking it round on each other. It wasn't what y'all thought about had to go along with it. Because she was stressing me. And putting pressure on me. And what am I? What am I to you? And I... Nip. Oh, God. Allegedly. And he was just going off. And he was like, God, if I... If I had known they done did this to me and I'm caught in this other world over here, I'm not dead, my body dead. But if I had known this and I, and I if, if this relationship could have been what I thought it was or if we could have get along, then I wouldn't be over here because they would have warned me or, or this wouldn't have happened to me. Now I'm trapped over here and I don't know what to do and I don't want to be over here like this and I can't move like I'm used to moving and I can't do what I want to do and I, I can't tell people what I need done and I can't tell people what happened to me or, 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 or warn them about this person, warn them about that person. Bitch, why you do this to me? And I said, oh. He said, bitch, how could you do this to me? Bitch, you set me. He started looking through her stuff. Going in the closet, tearing shit up. I'm falling looking. 
It's a bank statement and a contract in now. Comedy and tragedy. Mask. You are grieving in public, but inside you think about the money that you are, because this is revenge, revenge. He said, really, she's angry with me. Hey, Mara. He said, because one day I got a funny feeling. Because I know we weren't getting along. I'm fucking a bitch. She fucking a nigga. He, he say, I, I put a bug where she was. He said, I heard her talking about me. She called, said I was weak and pussy whoop and stupid. And that she get my money. And she was going to get with me. And now that she had me, she was going to. Lock me in and control me and that I was weak for her and I was going to get all his money and control him. He do what I say and he heard her talking to another man. You know, I've been knowing this for a while. That's why, you know, I ain't say nothing because when people say, oh, it's so this and this, so that, it might have been. But it wasn't even that when Nipsey was in his body. It might have been that first. But when things start going, because see, Nipsey is like this. He's, he's very diplomatic. He's a gentleman. And there are a lot of things y'all wouldn't even know if this hadn't happened to him. Because he don't like to get out and add his business and stuff. He was going through hell. They was fighting all the time. He was tired. And when he, she didn't know, he went back and heard it. And he was like, oh, really? So I'm a bitch nigga, and I'm a weak-ass nigga, and you gonna use me and get my money and trick me? And and then he started making other plans. And he said, I'm not getting ready to get married to nobody. Because that would be devastating for my mother and my family. Because if something had happened to him, and if he had married the wrong person, they'd be fighting and wouldn't get no money. The family wouldn't have really got nothing. And they would have walked away with it. And then, you know, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. I'm going to say this a little bit. Because Nipsey said, he said, you know, people think I'm crazy. They think I'm wild. He said, but I learned a lot from my big brother, Black Sam. He said, people think that Sam dumb and Sam slow and Sam don't see certain things. He said, but Sam is brilliant and Sam is off the motherfucking chain. I said, I can look at him through them glasses and tell that motherfucker ain't nothing to be motherfucking fucked with. He said... He knows. And I said, what? And he said, they just watch. Because I had my other little young lady on the phone that's very gifted. We had the same kind of gifts. And she said, Nipsey's over here. She said, you want me to ask him? I said, you got to ask this goddamn man because he's over here too. He going back and forth between. And I said, well, why? They don't, they don't know who we were talking about. And he said, they, they, my brother not stupid. My sister not stupid. I said, okay. We ain't got to go no further. And, uh, yes. Yeah, and I'm not going to repeat what else we discussed about that. Uh, I said, because I asked her, she said, you know, I want to ask you about a particular woman. That he was with us. Okay. 
She said, well, you never said nothing about her, so. Yeah, I said this is all alleged, what I'm saying. It's for entertainment. I'm just shooting this shit. I, she said, you never, Miss Lex, I want to ask you so bad. What you said, M. Powers? I'm just going to smile. <laughs> I'm just going to smile. And the Rama. She said, I've been wanting to ask you because you don't never say nothing about them. I said, yeah, I don't. I kind of, you know, I said, do Nip want me to say something about that? She said, yeah. And I said, I ain't going to call no name. I'm just going to say something. He, he, he said, yeah. Because he been talking shit all weekend. And, uh. I hate to say that. No. He he, he he be like around her studying. He worried about that baby. Because that baby a lot like him. But he worried about who be around that baby. And I know. I know. Because the baby longs for his daddy. And needs to be around him a lot. And I looked at that, and she said, well, you never said anything. I said, because people can't take it. People say they want the truth. They don't. People say they listen, but they won't. So I'm sure I'll be attacked for this. But then again, like I say, I'm just a weirdo from the ATL girl. Talking about people I don't know. And I love him back. He not mad at nothing I said. He ain't disagree with nothing I said. So I've been listening to him and I said, I'm, I'm, he had a fit. And he kept saying, if I could just come back. And that body said, why they trick me? He said, why I couldn't see this bitch or do this? He said I would still be here. He did these people out there trusted. And I'm just like Nipsey, I wish I could I, I could take it back. I wish I could change it. If I knew what to do, I would do. I didn't I didn't know that that's what happened. And he's going back looking. Yeah, and I'm looking at this and I'm shocked because she thinks it's funny because in a way it's like revenge. You fucked around on me after what I did for you and then you don't want to be with me and you think you're going to leave me and turn on me and you don't use me to meet this person that person, I will fuck your shit up. Motherfucker, you ain't play. Baby. This person that I'm talking about. You wouldn't believe the mouth and the temper tantrums. The temper tantrums like a little girl. When she's spoiled and can't get her way, everything's about her. And when it's not about her, oh boy, she becomes... Very cutthroat, very vicious, and very vindictive. And then he mentioned to me about some threesome. With her and people in the entertainment industry. You know, I always thought Cassie was just so cute. You know, with P. Diddy. But I think now she's with another guy and she's pregnant. Mm. Well, I think y'all had enough of my weirdness tonight. Oh, he's already very intuitive. He's very smart. He love him, Papa. And him, Papa, love him. 
He watches him. Yes, Sagittarius women can be very treacherous. I'm a Sagittarius woman and I'm saying it. Especially if they're on the low side and everything's about them and they're always a center of attention and they're told they're, you're so cute. You're so pretty. Kind of dimple. <laughs> well, thank you for watching this edition of AKT Celebrity Reads. I'm going to keep working on this reading because there's still so much I didn't get to. No, I'm tired and it's late. I haven't even eaten all day. I've been fasting all day, girl, dealing with this dumb shit. Dealing with the bullshit. So, I'm sorry if some of you are, well, no, I'm not. If you don't like my tits and my outfit, just don't look, okay? Just don't come to my readings because I just thought it was so cute. I just want to wear this outfit. And it's so, I don't know if you can tell how velvety, it's so soft, it feels so good on my skin. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Mary. Sorry that I had to say what I had to say. I don't, I don't like what I said. I don't like what I saw. And he's enraged and he's just telling me. And I'm just going, oh, oh no, you want me to say that? You see, come on, you know they're going to get mad at me. If I say that, thank you, Edith. And he's like, God damn it, this fucking bitch. They, tr they tricked me. To tr he was just walking back and forth in the house. And the house he used to be, he used to live in. He's walking back and forth in this room, I see. And it's, it goes into, there's a closet. He went into the closet and, thank you, Lasagna. And I'm looking down at this pocket because it was a bag and then she bends over she pulls out this contract and this statement and oh uh oh I just said something okay well you know it, it could be more than one woman that I'm talking about because he was dealing with two women and he went in there behind her back and he saw that since that happened to him this woman has new money it's either new money added to an existing bank account they had or a new bank account with a whole bunch of money and new deals that she's going to benefit off of that are nipsies. And play it, play it, play it. Because this is this is a part of revenge. Oh, Tony. It's sad. But see, this is what they do. You have assignments. When you get to certain levels, there's one you are sick on to pull in. Somebody put you on a nigga. They get something. And as you put yourself in now, and you got your handlers leading you, and then as they fall, you rise. More than one person rose up off this is still rising up. Just, just look at it. God damn it, look at it. Nah. Because I, I said on this for months because I wanted to see where he want to go and he had asked me to say something I said now you know I can't say that because they're going to attack me for this and this weekend it really took his head yeah yeah it's low and it's high people on the low end people on the high end and with music and artistic literary rights and things baby mamas Jealousies, fightings, and regrets, and more legal issues coming up. A group of people fighting and one person fighting against the group. I think Tanisha. But I don't think that's the only battle 
that's being dealt with. And then somebody that wants to fight with Nipsey's family since they cannot attack him, they uh, there's a female lawyer involved and they're trying to avoid going into court because she is so nice with it. They don't want to do that. They're trying to find a way to settle this outside of a courtroom and a jury, judge and jury. This is several people as well as a still a lot of underhanded shit and spying inside of the family. Taking information, act like you're concerned, your family member, loved one, whatever, and then you're taking it out to someone else. Relaying information. I'm seeing this and I'm like, why can they not see this? The treachery that is here and still the legal disputes. And even the treachery in the fighting around legal disputes. And one person feel like they're being ganged upon. And this is around a child, children and money, as well as music. Just like it came up the other day when I said the lawsuits were coming. Every time I look at him, I see something like this. Well, I have to hold back because I know how y'all are. A lot of people have been attacked by saying something like that. Oh, you're hating. How could you say that, bitch? And this. Okay. Okay. Well, Eric has already said something. They already know. See, this is not. Eric's not the only shooter, he's not the main killer. No, Sam plays chess. Samantha plays chess. The father is brilliant too. They know what they're doing. They're doing the right thing. They're handling this. They're not us. Remember, we're just on the outside looking in and what we see on the other side. They're the family. So it's things they have to do that they cannot say. Yeah. They're handling this the way that they're sure. They're doing a very good job. I love the new building with the store and the picture with Samantha and her brother. Gorgeous girl. Nipsey's such a handsome man. And that's a beautiful picture they have with Sam and her brother. Right there. They're doing a really good job. And setting up the neighborhood Nip foundation and then they got the money from Puma or I hope that's just the first installment. Uh, so something so tragic and so painful. And Nipsey's going crazy right now. They're handling it very well. Even dealing with people lying on them. Like the lady wants to sue them. Said Nipsey owed her some money for co-writing a song or something. And then I told you a couple of weeks ago. I think the warning to Black Sam. I saw a murder drive by something. They shot one of Nipsey's friends in New York a couple of weeks ago. I think it said it went in his hip or something. But it cut a major artery. I had seen the death. And the court stuff and the treachery keeps coming on. So... I'm going to look at this again. It's too much. Well, of course, LAPD. Yes, I said that. Too much stuff. Uh, I have to look at to make sure. I, that's why it takes me so long. I don't want to just get up here over my mouth and say something. I was talking, you know. Just to say something. I, I, I respect him. I listen to him. Yes, Granny is. And then I, they showed me something. I said, what is that? And I kept looking. and looked like little holes. I said, but they look like, shaped like a pyramid. I said, oh, honey, honeycomb. Bumblebee. Is that what you want me to see? And I, and I said, look, what is the time? What do they do? What do they eat? Where do they come out? Were they in March? Yes, bees were out in March in California. He knows. He knows that you all love him. And you know what? I get so tired. I thought when the guy threatened me and they said, yeah, you need to take this down. You need to stop doing this. And then people send me donations and people send me letters and they say, we love Nipsey. Can you please come back and tell us something Nipsey say? We love when you tell us the message. We wait for the message for Nipsey. Oh, thank you, Jerome. Girl, he's so crazy. He's so silly. <laughs> but he's brilliant and now he's going backwards he comes over here this is amazing i've worked with people that they technically call dead before but i've never worked with with one this long 
And so I do it because you all know on YouTube, I'm going to put this on YouTube. Whenever you say the name Nipsey Hussle, whenever you spell out the name Nipsey Hussle in a title of a video, you do not get paid any money. And you all know I always put his whole name in the video so you know I don't get any money from the video. I do it because I want to. Because I want to help him. So that's not the motivation for these. Now, yes, that's, that helps because you all send me donations. You do private readings for of your own. They have nothing to do with Nipsey. Sure. But I notice how people have, have stopped putting his name in the video or they'll say N, NH or something like that because they want to get money off the video. You see, I never do that. It's I do it from my heart. I do it from my soul. And I'm not saying anything wrong making money. I don't mind making money. I just don't want to make it off him. Because it's a labor of love for me. And I'm learning so much. And if, and you've heard, you think I'm lying. There are plenty of YouTubers that do videos on him that tell you they don't get paid whenever you put the name Nissy Hustle. So you can see I'm not lying. I do this because me love him. <laughs> I really got to love him. He's such a sweetheart. And I really hope, I mean, you, I can't even say justice. Because you... When something like that happens to someone, there's really no justice. Because the justice would be to go back in time and right the wrong. But I, I, it won't happen with this case, unfortunately. I wish I knew how to bring it back. Because it was so wrong. And he is amazing to see. That doesn't happen to everyone. I've seen it happen to some people. Especially when I told y'all that story before a long time ago, before I started doing the readings to, sh to, to show to you my abilities to see if you wanted the ability. Where I was in the uh, funeral home and I loved it in the embalming room. And I remember some all the people that I got to work on and wash their hair and wash their feet and wash their face. I would look and I would see a shadow yes it has empowered see I, I've been treated so dirty down south for being born with that ability because a lot of people in my family had that ability I nobody ever wanted to respect respect this pimping you know they didn't want to see this game they didn't want to see this ability and respect it they said I was a devil so people would always treat me like a weirdo in Atlanta that's why it doesn't hurt my feelings I've embraced that. I love that name. It's cool. That means you're special. People say you're a widow. <laughs> so, I saw a shadow. I was uh, helping to bathe and dress a man that they had embalmed. And I could see him. His body, one of the bodies, which is the physical body, they say you're dead. You're not dead. There's just one body, but most people cannot see. They cannot perceive. They don't have the depth to speak to someone that is now in the underworld, but was always, see, you are always in that, in the physical body. You're different people. You have several bodies encased in this one, the astral, mental, emotional, spiritual bodies. You have several bodies in this one. So people misunderstand. And I think when you're physically dead, everything's over and it's gone. It's not. You're the same person. This man, the exact duplicate of his body body that's why I knew it was him it looked just like him the him that was laying on the table as we were putting I mean we literally did everything you some people don't do that it depends on what funeral home you go to you might be looking at a person in a casket and they look good on the top and they have the shirt the tie the jacket but then they have no clothes on from the waist down so you see the top of the casket open the second body the part of the casket split and it's closed so you cannot Look under there and see the waist and the, the legs and the feet. Some people are lazy like that. They don't take care of their bodies. Um, you know, they just embalm them and throw something. Because a lot of times they, they're just doing it for the, the dollar to get the body. The more bodies you get in and out, the more money that the person embalming gets, you know, gets for that. And so I said, no, I want to put all the clothes on. That's, even if you don't see them, it's, it's only right. And so we put the T-shirt 
the underwear, if the rigor mortis wasn't too bad, if they hadn't broke up and loosened the body, uh, I, I'm like, I'll put your socks on. Because once I could see the person standing there, and I said, I won't, because some people are disrespectful to the bodies. I said, I won't disrespect you because I know that will come back to me or my child or somebody that I love. I don't want to be treated that way. And they would talk to me. And they said, I don't want to be here. How did I get here? Because a lot of them don't remember. And I said, well, they didn't tell me, so I, I don't know. And then I would ask. And then this is what they would do to me sometimes. they say, well, what did you see? Because then they started saying, yeah, that's the creepy one right there. And then they didn't want me to come around no more because they're like, she gives me the creeps. So I said, well, this one went to sleep and it felt like a water hose or like a, um, you know, the, what's that thing? Is that the fire hydrant little thing, the metal thing outside when the, when the, when the firemen come to, to, to put the fire out and they open it and put the hose in there and then they turn it on. Is that like a fire hydrant? I think. It was like, um, her head, like she was asleep and then all of a sudden something burst in her brain and it was like a, a, a like a, a hole, let's say you got a, a like a fire hydrant which is like that, that's what happened to her head. And then when I told the undertaker what happened, he was like, how the fuck did you know? And I said, what did I do? Yeah, that's what was wrong with her. I'm like, what did I do? I, I just want you to tell me in my learning, like, did I hear that spirit? And he was like, get your weirdo ass up out. And I was just like, why I got to be all that? Why I got to go? And then he was like, do you know that that's what, that's what happened to her? And then the, the man, I saw what happened to him. He had like a slower death. Her, she was healthy. And then she went to sleep, and in her sleep it burst in her brain. She was had no problems. When they opened her up, they did a full autopsy cranial, and all this was good. So I couldn't see the tissue there. It was, it was just a hole. And she, she didn't know what happened, and I got, I felt, Oh my God, I came home and I cried because she followed me home and she said, I don't want to be dead. And I, I said, you're not dead. She said, but I want the body back. I miss my mom. I miss my baby. And I said, this doesn't feel like power to me. To be able to see this happen to someone. And well, I thought, Tony, that everybody was like that. I thought that's why everybody wanted to be down there. But that's not, they were doing it for money. I was doing it for a higher reason. So when I do Nipsey, it reminds me of, what, I had no idea what God was preparing me for. And this was, what, 15, 20 years ago. When I just was kind of wanting to see. Could I practice and learn? And the man started talking to me. And so what I did was they let me come. I said, can I go to his wake? Like, can I go to his funeral? And they said, yes. So I I went and sat with that man. And I saw something I had never seen. And it's the same kind of thing I've seen, I see around Nipsey. I just have to draw it. I sat by myself. And I said, I hope that, that I did right by you. And I helped to put your clothes on. And I helped to take your bath. And I made sure nobody hurt you. And disrespect your body like I seen him did with the other people. And he was cool with me. Then I started seeing his burial was wrong. People are labeled black. And they are embalmed improperly. And they are dumped in caskets and graves. And this man had Egyptian bloodlines. And Native American bloodlines. And he was supposed to be embalmed a different way. If embalmed at all. And then his body anointed with oils and have a special ceremony and the body wrapped like a mummy. And not put in the ground that way. And I said, and then as I looked, I started taking a pen, colored pencil, crayon, paper, and I saw these beautiful orbs and chakras and auric fields around, beneath, 
above the body as the physical body was decaying the higher self because you didn't like with the ba and the ka started to rise above and hover over the casket and so I started to draw him because he said I could draw him and I still have these drawings I'm going to see can I find them and show you some of what I saw everybody has these but they're not in the same degree they're not in the same colors they're not in the same place they're not in the same bodies and I said wait a minute they're lying to us they're not telling us the truth about who we are and what we are. And they say, you're dead, that's it. And I even read books where they said the astral, sometimes the astral might carry over into a new body, a new life. But the other bodies, the spiritual, mental, emotional, are supposed to dissolve within five days of death. And I will say physical death. But that's a lie. Because I had seen and helped embalm people that had been dead for maybe a month. But they had been kept frozen because it was some problem with the family not having the money and the insurance or having to raise the money at the last minute. And then they come and they said, this person's been dead a long time. And then I start to look at the person and they get up as I'm wiping and I'm like, it's okay. And I wipe their hair, I wipe their face because I know that was not safe for me to do but I would touch them with my bare hand unless they were leaking or something and I didn't do that but if in a place like they still had their hair most of them, they still had everything on them they had their hair the eyelashes their mouth their teeth and stuff and I would like let me wipe your mouth out let me wipe the corners let me wipe your teeth um, or clean your teeth then I start to do that the person's whole template comes up I think they know when people love them they know when people sense, because you can't lie to a spirit. And when a person gets out of the body, you can't lie to them. They know. You, you, they know everything about you. They know what you're full of shit, whatever. They know if you can see them, you can hear them. And so when they saw that I was so loving to them, they would come stand by the body. I said, I know you're here. Is it you? Anything you want me to do, you want your hair a certain way, you want your face, you like your makeup, you like the lipstick, you like your tie, you like your shirt. And they're like, I don't want to talk to you about that. I, look, can you take a message to such and such? I said, I cannot. Why? I said, because they won't tell me nothing. They said, I'm a weirdo. I can't look. So they were like, just, I need you to reach my mom. I, I don't know her because they won't tell me her damn name. They said, I get them the creeps. That I'm a damn witch. So I could, I got the, they got the file, they hide the files from me. And then when I tell them what I see, they tell me to get away from their damn ass and start shaking. So that, <laughs> and that would make me feel so bad. I don't want to go cry. And they said I'm a weirdo. And then they, and they said I'm a witch. I get them to creep so. But now it's like, okay, because. <laughs> <laughs> because I've done so many of these and I had people verify what I see so that's like okay you're an oddball you didn't fit in you're never gonna fit in so just deal with it you can't do anything about it so I just work to be the best person I can be and develop the, the gifts the best I can and help people well, it's okay. I think you're, you're, they call you a witch because there's nothing wrong with it. But when they don't understand it, it's scared. Just thinking we were living back then, they'd probably be killing us and hanging us up. People that have these abilities. But it was fun today to actually be on the phone with someone. I don't get jealous about stuff like that. Who had the same abilities. He talking to her. His ass talking to me. He passing pictures, uh, messages to me. And he passed a message to her, and then he's cracking up. I'm like, Nissy is so, see, come on, yeah, I was fucking several hoes. And one, I, I, he might have said women, I'm sorry, he probably didn't say no hoes. He said, I was fucking several women, and started giggling. And I'm like, why is he giggling? And she said, he just thinks it's funny. He loved women, and he was <laughs> seeing several women, and he started describing the women to me and her, and I said, yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he told me. 
Bro, both of us on the phone going back and forth. I was like, this is so fun because we, I never had that experience. I'll, I'll, one other person I had the experience, but her seeing the demons and seeing the beings like me and then him going back and forth. And I'm like, you like pretty women. So I know you go back because she's pretty. And we were on the phone. He's going back and back and forth and he's hanging over with her. And I'm like, okay, I, this is great. <laughs> and I said, does he want me to say that? And she said, yes, he wants you to say that. I said, I cannot say the name. He said, no, you know, and he told her and it shocked me. I knew it was him because he said, tell Alexis, I said, she got to be like the ace of spades. I said, the ace of spades. He said, he told me to tell Sam. He said, you got to be smooth, got to be cool. I said, okay. All righty, I'm going to do what he says. Is it the wacky one that's in Houston? I don't know who's in here. Oh, girl, please don't get me on that one. Please don't get me on that one that says she the baby mom. Tell them the one that got the little one-year-old. And said that's Nissa baby. Girl, look. Let me drink some goddamn liquor. Don't make me drink no whole fucking bottle here. I don't want to get on that motherfucker there. Now, I'm not saying it ain't true, because I don't know. Only DNA can tell. That fucker there ain't got him up. You know what? I'm gonna I'm leave. I'm gonna leave. Mm. I don't know. She she ain't got no DNA, so I'm gonna wait because I want to see where they at, though. I want to see the DNA. Where they at, though. See, that's all I'm gonna leave that here, baby. Now, I ain't said a man didn't get, like, to get no shot of pussy. You know, every now and then. I ain't said nip didn't hit it. I don't know. I didn't ask him because I said, no, I don't want to know. If you did that, I don't want to know. Because it's kind of hard for me because she kind of ain't got them. I'm not, I don't want to know. <laughs> We're going to see what the DNA say. Okay, I want to know where it at though. I don't wonder what she waiting on. I ain't, don't ask me to do no reading about that, him. I, don't, I really don't want to go there. I just hate if he did hit it. He should have had a rub on that of uh, uh, two or something that didn't goddamn break. That's all. Girl, I'm tired now. It's probably real late and I ain't had nothing to eat all goddamn day now. Now, y'all know I need to get my sleep. Fighting these silly motherfuckers. That come over here. And you know, I'm gonna get, I ain't gonna get too much into it in this video. I'm gonna get into it on a separate video. This is my, my own personal shit. But I might need some of y'all motherfuckers, if you ain't in that now already, to come to goddamn court. Not court, but goddamn court. To bag me up. Cause look like my daddy family is trying to fight me. Nah. And we ain't goddamn backing down in this motherfucker. And I'm just like that, that goddamn man up there on 300. Where that man told him, we're going to wipe y'all out. The one with that damn, his mouth green with that damn lipstick on. And that chain and his nose going down with that bald head with his Xerxes or whatever his name. And one of his generals or that fat black man said, we're going to wipe y'all out in the sun. And the man said, well, goddamn it, we'll fight in this shape. But it's Sparta in this goddamn bitch. You come? You want to fight me, goddamn it? Bring it on. Nug if you buck, bitch. Come on. Nah. Cause I know y'all got my back. Yeah, not code. C-O. C-O. What? C-O-T. Code. But we're going in this bitch. But it ain't no goddamn retreat and surrender in this motherfucker. Like it's sad. But they motherfucking goddamn want a motherfucker sad. The fact remains, Jackie Wilson lived in Atlanta. Jackie Wilson, like I told that girl, that fat one, that goddamn got drunk, Snort that shit. 
and got on that video that y'all heard her cussing and calling me all kind of bitches. See, I told her, nah, that your daddy met my mama in Atlanta and was beating the brakes off that pussy. We know it was. Cause I look like him with two titties. Now I have a voice that's similar to his and I got it on your daddy's way. And the bitch said that to me, so I'm not letting it go. Long as I know that y'all got my goddamn back. I ain't bound down in this bitch. Y'all not gonna punk me and fuck me and tell me that I ain't singing to my daddy and I can't use his goddamn name. Let the game begin, Hope. ATL, Hope. Y'all done started it. Let's get it popping in this motherfucking bitch. You can't get mad at me because he was goddamn fucking the sleeves off her motherfucking head and liked it that red bone, hazel eye, big booty, Georgia peach pussy. See, if all y'all niggas up north, one time in y'all life, oh y'all die, goddammit. You need to come down south and get some damn Georgia peach pussy. You got to see, it ain't nothing like it. You need to get you some Georgia peach. Because my daddy came from Detroit. And these Georgia peaches start fucking him. He didn't want to go home no more. He stayed down here. Until he got sick. When he left in, in um, 1975, he was living in Atlanta, bitch, whether you like it or not. And he got with Dick Clark, got clean, off drugs, getting ready to make a comeback, and he collapsed on stage with Dick Clark. He didn't come back to Atlanta no more because he got sick. And he was up there. You know, they put him in a nursing home. Okay. He was in Atlanta with good tune. How much? You get to Georgia Peach. They sweet, fat, and juicy. Back when there's some fresh Georgia, young Georgia Peach pussy. With that southern hospitality on top of it. I don't hate the player, bitch. I hate the game. But you're not finna take that bullshit out on me, bitch. Y'all not finna do it to me, bitch. Don't do it, bitch. No, uh-uh. Don't do it, ho. Don't do it, ho. But anyway, I'm finna go. But that, that's another video. I'll be back soon, goddammit. Because I want to know, is you riding for this motherfucker right here or not, goddammit? Is you riding with it? Because I'm working on some song now. And I'm saying to my damn daddy. Long as I got some damn breath in my motherfucking body. I'm working on a new damn song now. I'm working on my damn church song the same to my goddamn dad. Fuck this motherfucker, man. Fuck these goddamn bitches, man. I'm going to see y'all in the next goddamn video. I love y'all. Thank y'all for riding and tearing that motherfucker bitch up this goddamn weekend. But that fucker didn't know she walked into a hornet's nest when she did that shit to me. Y'all told that motherfucker, up. Oh! That big one that's specking that. Y'all drove all through that motherfucker ass and let her know. I don't know who you doing it to, but you ain't doing this to Alexis and getting away with it, goddamn it. You ain't doing that to the player over here. But bitch, I don't know what you thought or what you heard, Hope. But let me tell you where they really motherfucking is. Well, I'll see you for another edition of Alexis, AKT Celebrity Reads. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> Bye.